Praise God. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms. Chapter 34, Psalms. The book of Psalms. Ooh, praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Reading our Psalms 34 this morning. I have it on the board for you. It's in uh, King James. We're going to put it on this morning. It's all right. If you don't have King James, say amen. Yeah. If you do have King James, say amen. Amen. Yeah. And if you don't know what you got, say I don't know. Oh, praise God. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Psalms 34. David was acting a little crazy. There's a whole story that goes about with that. Uh, if anybody knows the Old Testament scriptures, he was he was being chased and he was fleeing for his life, and then he acted a little a little crazy, and then he was able to escape. Anyways, that's a uh, this song. This song comes out of that. Anyways, verse one it says, "I will bless the Lord at all times." His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, praise God. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name forever. Or let us exalt his name together. Excuse me. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise Amen. God. We're going to stop right there. We're going to pray. We just get into the midst of it right there, I'm telling you. We just get into a little bit. Anyways, let's pray over this message. Dear Lord God, thank you so much for all that you have done this wonderful day, Lord God. Thank you so much, God, for a wonderful time in your word already this morning, Lord God. A wonderful time in worship. God, thank you for all that you have prepared for us this day. God, all that you have prepared to do, Lord God, we receive whatever it is that you would have from us, Lord God. If, yes. if salvation needs to happen, Lord God, if change needs to be broken off, Lord God, if uh, deliverance needs to come thank forth, Lord God, if thank folks you. need a miracle this morning, a blessing, Lord yes. God, an increase, Lord, encouragement, change, whatever it is, God, I pray that you would have your way totally and completely, Lord God, and do all that you want to do today. Oh, Lord, for we give this service to you, Lord God. Lead the way, God. Oh, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, some of y'all failed right there. I didn't pause just to see if anybody's listening to the word of God this morning. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, some people praise. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just checking. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Ooh, praise God. My soul boasts in the Lord. It doesn't boast in me. Doesn't boast in my circumstances. Doesn't boast in what I'm wearing today. Doesn't boast in the weather. How many know the weather has just been weird lately? I don't know. I'm waking up to storms. I'm going to bed to storms. It's raining. It don't stop. And then it does stop. And it's hot. And it's cold. And it's weird. I don't understand what's going on outside. That's all right. My soul boasts in the Lord. Yeah. God's got it under control. Amen. Amen. Right. God is taking care of it no matter what. Amen. I can lay my head down at night and have peace Amen. knowing that Amen. it'll be okay. Amen. Whether Amen. I wake up here in the morning or I wake up in home in heaven, huh? come on. Oh, it'll be all right. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hello. Come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. We understand we're going to magnify. You ever magnify stuff? Anybody here ever take a, a, a paper clip or something when you was a kid, a spoon? Well, no, spoons aren't really good. But anyways, you take something and you, you get it and you rub it on that magnet and you rub it on that magnet and you rub it on that magnet and you rub it on that magnet. And then you put that paper clip and a bunch of other paper clips and you see how many you can pick up. Oh, how you, you magnify the Lord and it, it attracts. Come on. Come on. It attracts folks. Amen. Oh, come on. When we get into some good praise and worship, when we get to <laughs> worship in God, people can't just stand around and be still. They either got to get out the building or jump into the magnification of the Lord. Huh? Come on. You get to shouting or get the goosebumps or something or you got to hit the road. Huh? Come on. Magnify the Lord. Woo! Uplift his holy name. And get in while the getting's good. Praise God. Oh, praise God. And it says, let us magnify him uh, together. Yes, and praise God. Together. Like those paper clips. Huh? Let's come together and lift up his holy name. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Fears. Fears is plural. Not just one fear. Oh, 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 you caught that too. Oh. Praise God. Anybody here a little afraid of maybe what's going on in our economy? A little bit. Anybody here afraid of what might happen in the next election? A little bit. Anybody here afraid of a little bit of coronavirus? What you hear on the news, people dying and going to the uh, hospitals and such. Maybe a little bit. It says, I sought the Lord. Ooh, that's key number one. I sought, I went after, I seek God's face. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Amen. Oh, praise God. Praise God. You, you know, my kids, we took them to Noah's Ark and then we strapped them to a, a strap and shoved them off a plank that was like 30 feet in the air. I don't know, it was way, 80, 80 feet in the air. Shoved them, well, I didn't shove them off. I wanted to, but they wouldn't let me. Anyways, they, they, had, to, they had to step off at their own volition. And you know, I was on the ground watching and from the ground, I heard some children seeking the Lord. You know what I mean? <laughs> I could hear knees knocking. I could hear stomachs growling and nerves happening. And then I heard, Lord Jesus, please, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise God. Come on. He delivered me from all my fears. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 5. They looked upon or looked unto him and were light, lightened. And their faces were not ashamed. You know, when you, when you pay attention to that, that verse right there, it's, it's an amazing verse for what David is saying here. They looked unto him, talking about looking unto God, and their faces lit up. Mm -hmm. Their countenance glowed. Come, come on, man. Mm -hmm. Amen. You ever see a, a newlywed couple, and they come back from being newlyweds, and they just have a, a glow? <clears throat> They just have this glow. They just have this, and then maybe later on, there uh, uh, something happens, and, and uh, a baby is is on the way, and her mom just has this glow about it. It's, a, I mean, she got indigestion, and there's things moving inside her, but she's still glowing. You know what I'm saying? There's something going on about it, right? They looked unto God. Amen. And because of the blessings of God, because of the goodness of God, because of the countenance of God, well, it says they were they were enlightened. And you know when you get in the presence of the Lord so good. Amen. There are people around you can see Amen. there's something different about you. Amen. When you get into the presence of the Lord so much, people look at you automatically and say, you know, you ain't the same. What's, what's different about you? Something, something happened. What? You, you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, you get married? <laughs> what, what, something, what happened to you? I said, no, no, no. I was, I was with the Lord. I was with the Lord. I was with the Lord. And I can say that unashamed on oh, the rest of that verse. Come on. And their faces were not ashamed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It ain't the same as getting caught coming out of the ABC store as it is getting caught coming out of church. Now, come on. You come out of the ABC store, folks might stand in their head. They might see you and turn the other way. I, I don't know that person. I don't know. Hopefully he didn't see me. Hopefully she didn't see me. Coming out of church. Now, that's something different. Oh, we just had church. You want to come back? What happened again tonight? I'm not ashamed to tell. Oh, praise God. Come on here. Verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard me and saved me out of all my all his excuse me, troubles. I know that without God, I'm nothing. I am nothing. You understand? It doesn't matter if I'm the richest person in the world. It doesn't matter if I'm the chief, the king, the president, whatever you want to call it, of any country, leadership, uh, uh, dominion, power, whatever, authority. Without God, I'm nothing. Yeah. And the recognition of David here saying, this poor man cried. Ooh, praise God. Say he was a man after God's own heart. Eventually he was King David. Huh, come on. He was ruler of everything. Amen. That's right. And yet, this poor man cried. Come on. Know your place in the Lord. Know your place in this world. No matter how good things may be here, this world is not your home. That's right. Amen. 
Don't forget that. You're just passing through. This is not the place that you want to be. We, we discussed it here the other day. Uh, uh, folks praying, uh, Wednesday night, folks praying, Lord, don't return until I get a chance to go on vacation. Until I get a chance to go to Disney World, Lord, please don't come back until I get a chance to go see the Great Smoky Mountains or whatever, whatever it is. No, 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 this world is not my home. Amen. Lord, come quickly. Lord, come today. Amen. Lord, we get, get back for taxes this day. I really appreciate it. We can get back long before I have to pay my taxes on my truck. Anyways, all right. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him. Oh. I, again, out of, out of some of his troubles. Oh. 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 Anybody here living this this morning? Anybody here getting this this morning? Yeah. Come on. Are you, are you understanding? Yeah. Yeah. All your fears can be wiped away in Christ. All your troubles can be wiped out in God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Cry out to him. Seek him. Amen. And God will deliver you. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Come, on. Come on, there's goodness in God. There's so much goodness in God. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, come on. Now, this is one that people just don't get today. They just don't understand. I can't go to church. There's a coronavirus pandemic. I can't go. A protest might show up and might start a riot or something at my church. I can't have that just that just that's just upsetting. I can't have this event or that event because somebody might tattletale on me. And then the government might come and say something to me and shut me down. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear the Lord. Amen. Not the government. Right. Not a protest group, not fear of losing my finances, not fear of losing my social status, not fear of losing anything but the Lord. And then angels, the angel of the Lord came from about them that, that fear him. And then what's he do? He, he delivers us. Yes. And I tell you what, it seems like God does a lot of delivering and saving. Now I'm trying to tell you that. Yes. It seems like there's a lot of security and soundness in the word of God. It seems like if I'm a Christian, I really ain't got much in this world to be worried about. Right. And if I do, God will take care of it. Wow. What happens when you go to church? You hear the word of God. Amen. Imagine that people would just come on up in here on Sunday mornings. Praise the Lord. How many people ain't hearing the word of God today? Because they ain't having service. Moving on. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Amen. Oh, come on. I have tasted and seen just about anything that's set before me on a plate, on a table, with a chair. If I can sit down and eat it, I'm going to sit down and eat it. You know, the reason why, because I, I heard a study one time from the Italians, and the Italians said if you stand while you're eating, you don't digest properly, and it causes you to gain weight. <laughs> So I sit down and eat. <laughs> come on, man, come on. I don't know if they got that study quite right. I'm just saying, I don't know if they got that study just quite. I mean, that's what they said. They, that's what they said. Oh, I love my Italian family. Okay, anyways. But I have to say that I have tasted and seen that the Lord is so good. Amen. Amen. Oh, he is good. Yeah. He is good with the capital G. Come on, he is the best, the greatest good as that, that, that old... Uh, uh, cartoon said, I am the greatest good the wife was talking to the husband. Anyways, God is the greatest good you will ever find in this world. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's right. And he challenges you. Taste and see. Try me in this. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and pull out a blessing that you cannot contain. Come on. Great God. He says taste and see. Great God. We talk to people all the time about having faith. Well, you just have blind faith, Pastor. The Bible tells you to walk off a cliff you do it. Well, the Bible never tell you to walk off a cliff, but you're right, I do have blind faith. But it's also, there's something to back up that blind faith. I have tasted and seen God has proven himself time and time and time and time and time again. Amen. And so I don't have to worry about it when God says, go, I go. Because he's proven himself over and over and over. Maybe in the beginning it was just blind faith, but man, right now I'm standing on substance. Yeah. On what I have tasted and seen. Because the Lord has not failed me. And he will not fail me. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. 
Oh, we could talk about what you trust in this morning. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Yes. I hope so. If you ain't blessed, I can tell you what you need to do. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Right there it is. And just plain as day. Blessed is the man that trusts in his finances. Oh, oh, I almost got some of y'all started to say it there before I finish that sentence. I almost got you. Blessed is the man that trusts in his wife. Blessed is the man that trusts in his job. Blessed is the man that trusts in the best doctors and the best hospitals and the best of all the world. Me. No. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. Him being the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. God is good this morning, church. God is good. Yes. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Listen, there are over, well, there are 365 scriptures in the Bible that tell us to fear not. You understand that's one verse for every day of the week to tell you to fear not. Don't fear the world. Don't fear what's coming at you. Don't fear anything. But then there's other scriptures here in the Word of God that say to fear the Lord. Son, help me out here. There's other scriptures in the Bible that say, oh, fear the Lord. Verse 9. You, you understand? The fear of the Lord is a reverent fear. You understand? It's not shaking at the knees because we're afraid God's going to strike us down with some lightning bolt somewhere. No, it's a reverent fear. It's a respect. It's an awe. Kind of like going to grandma's house. She can reach you from anywhere you're sitting at the table. Huh, come on. She ain't but about three foot nothing, but she can reach you from anywhere in the whole room. I don't know how that's possible, but you know when you go to her house, you say yes, ma'am. You say yes, ma'am. You say no, ma'am. You eat whatever's put before you. You watch whatever she's watching. You, you stay with respect, and you keep to her opinions. That's why she reaches from anywhere across the table. Now, you're a whole lot bigger than she is, and when she knocks you in the head, it really doesn't hurt much, but you don't want Grandma to get upset with you. You have a reverence, a respect for your elder. Come on. You say, listen, I don't want to give Grandma a heart attack. I don't want to make her all upset. And I'm going to her house. I'm a guest at her house. So I'm going to abide by her house rules. I know better. And when grandma asked me a question I don't want her to ask, I just, I answered anyways. <laughs> See, those that fear the Lord, oh, there is no want to them that fear God. Amen. You understand? Amen. There's no want to them that do it God's way, like doing it grandma's way, her house, her rules. You do it God's way, you come to his house, his rules. Oh, all of a sudden there's no want That's right. to them that do it God's way. Amen. Oh, praise God. Now, come on, you have a messed up, jacked up life, you start going to God's way, things start being restored. Amen. Now, come on, marriages come back together, bank accounts start getting back raised up from where they was down in the negative. Now, come on now. now. Families start coming together. Forgiveness starts happening. Love starts just flowing all over the place. Amen. You're blessed. And all of a sudden, there's no want. There's no want. I don't want that thing that was causing me to sin anymore. I don't want that temptation. I don't, I don't want the things of this world. I, I don't want the mansions and the billions of dollars and the things that man, money can buy. Amen. I want the things money can buy. Amen. I want the goodness of God. Amen. I want the blessings and the mercies of our Lord and Savior. I, I, I want heaven. Amen. Amen. I ain't enough money in this world to buy you that. Come on. Oh, reverence Amen. and respect. Fear the Lord. Come on. We have lost some of that in this world today. Folks coming to the house of God saying any old thing, wearing any old thing. Come on now, don't spend a minute right here. Huh? Come on, folks, get around the preacher and don't, don't pay attention to their language anymore. Folks, get around a, a supposedly a man of God and they just, I mean, they do, they do and say any old thing. There's no fear that God will do anything. There's no fear of that smack from anywhere across the room. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that there's no place that you can hide from God because there ain't no place you can hide from Grandma. You know what I'm saying? God gave us great examples as we were raising up. As we was young, as we, we understood this. And if Grandma can reach me from anywhere in her house, I know God can reach me from anywhere in the world. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there's a generation that will have a parade on the city streets and do terrible, nasty things in the middle of the road. They have no fear of God. They have no fear of his word. They will use Bibles in the street 
to get a good fire lit so that then they could burn the American flag. Come on, it happened just a couple weeks ago. They grabbed a couple of Bibles from a local place and then they got that to start the fire. So their end goal was to burn the flag, but they couldn't get the flag lit because they couldn't get a fire going. We'll just use Bibles. Come on. Man, I'd be, I'd be so terribly afraid. I'd want to run in there and rescue those Bibles, but I'd be afraid I'd get struck down with whatever was about to hit them. Hit the mist of it all. Come on. Amen. Lord, <laughs> please. I'm telling you, there's no fear. There's no reverence. There's no respect for the Lord anymore. And there's definitely no respect for his house because that's the only place you can get coronavirus these days. I mean, I'm just saying, check the news. It's the only place you can get it. If you go to church and you sing and you attend service with, with more than just a couple people for just like an hour a week, that's it, buddy. That's the cause of everything. Yeah. If we just shut those down, we'll be all right. Yeah. Not Walmart, not Food Line, not, not the local restaurant, not the hospital or the nursing home or the DMV or you know, that bar. Oh, you know, uh, or the, or the, you know, the protest walking down the street or the rally or the party at such and such a house. Anyways, Ooh, it got quiet in here. Praise God. Verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Yeah. I, love the, I love the fact that he, he qualifies that statement. God, I want a, I want a Lamborghini, <laughs> green, and a Ferrari orange. Lord, can you give me those two things? God, I, I love you. And according to your word, Lord, I've been seeking you for this thing for years. Come on. Any good thing. Y'all know I won't be no more good than one of them Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Matter of fact, I'd probably get stuck and get out. But come on. I'm not just saying. That ain't good for me. That ain't good for me. I get in one of those things that have to get crazy down there. The jaws of life rip up that little battery in the car. Give me about that thing. I get so far now, you know the thing's just about sitting on the road, I get down there and get stuck. Let alone, my wife knows I, I drive way too fast. I'd get a speaking ticket. I'd put the car up a tree or up a pole or something. I mean, it wouldn't be, that ain't no good thing for me. I ain't old enough yet to have something that fast. Come on. I gotta grow up a little bit. Whew, Lord knows. The young lions do lap. Come on, those are supposed to be the kings of the jungle. Huh, come on. The young lions, not the old ones that are tired and rusty and maybe can't catch a good meal. The young lions, the ones that are youthful and vibrant, the ones that can go after anything and hunt down anything and take it down to a gazelle or a giraffe or an elephant, whatever they need because they're young and they're full of energy. But sometimes they go hungry and they suffer. And what they want, they don't have. Oh, but they that seek the Lord, praise God shall not want any good thing. You understand your status is elevated above the king of the jungle? Amen. Amen. Come on. You're more important. I'm sorry, Peter. You're more important than the king of the jungle, the king of beasts, the lion. You understand? You're higher on God's list. Amen. Praise God. And again, it's qualified. They that seek the Lord. Yeah. Come on. David's telling us we still got a little something we need to do about this. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Come on. And then all these other things will be added unto you. Oh, praise God. Anybody getting this this morning? Amen. Are you awake out there? Yeah? Yeah. You get it? Okay, good job. Verse 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you. The fear of the Lord. You understand, you went to grandma's house, you talked any old way you wanted to, and all of a sudden you got. <laughs> grandma said, way over there. What was that? I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you learned to apologize real quick. You learned to, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I don't know where she's at. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what was it? And somebody would tell you, you, you didn't wipe your feet when you came in the house. Like, My bad. I didn't know. You didn't... He didn't take his shoes off when he walked in the door. Ah, we don't do that in my house. You're at grandma's house. Take your take shoes off. My feet. The fear of the Lord is something that is taught. You understand, if we don't come to church and teach the next generation the fear of the Lord, Amen. there's going to be a whole generation out there. They're, getting, they're running into stuff. I, I don't know. Why do I keep having problems? What's going on? What's happening? I keep, I keep getting hit in the back of the head. Somebody's trying to get my attention, and I don't know what it's all about. 
It is God saying, hey, hey, I got, I got, I got, I got rules. I got ways. There's something you need to know. There's something you need to quit doing in your life. There's something you need to pay attention. There's a certain way I need you to act. There's a certain way I want you to do things because it leads to greatness. It leads to life and life more abundantly. Stop sinning. Stop doing that. You're going to go to hell. Get out of that burning building. Get out of that quicksand. What are you doing? Amen. And when there's no fear of the Lord because it's not being taught. Oh, well, yeah. And there's a whole generation out there that's just doing ignorant stuff. That send them straight to hell. Amen. Amen. That's straight to hell. The fear of the Lord is something that's taught. Amen. Had to be taught. You mean, come, come on. You know, anybody, anybody here ever go to one of them expensive stores? You didn't buy nothing. You were just shopping. Uh, come on. Cool. You, you go, and as soon, before you walk in, you get that, you get that conversation. Now you put your hands in your pockets and you don't touch a single thing and you don't ask me for nothing. And if you take your hands out of your pockets, that's it. That is it. You do not want to know the end of the sentence. Uh, come on. You get taught. You walk into this store. You, you can look. It's very pretty. It's very nice. Very pretty. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. There you go. Huh? You go over to a certain relative's house, they got that certain room that's got the plastic on the couch and the plastic on the carpet. You ain't allowed to go in there. You ain't allowed to eat on those dishes. You ain't allowed to eat on that table. You ain't allowed to sit on that couch. Huh? Come on. You know. You start asking questions. How come we never go in there? Shh. Don't ask that question. <laughs> that's for guests. We don't ever have no guests around here. What are That's for guests. Amen. Come on. There's a respect. There's a reverency. There's something that you're taught. When you're younger, when you're a babe in Christ, I ain't talking about age, I'm talking about younger in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're taught, and you're taught where you're taught here. Yeah. You're taught right, right, right here. Amen. You come to Sunday school, you come to Wednesday night Bible study, you come to youth group class, you're taught right, right here. You're taught to fear the Lord. He says, Come, ye children, hearken unto me, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And then if you back up, there's fear of the Lord will make you not miss out on any good thing. And this fear of the Lord will deliver you from anything that has got, got into you. This, this fear of the Lord will keep you from anything that you fear in the world. It'll keep you on the straight and narrow. It'll protect you. Wow. We learned that right here in the house, God. It's just like you learned it when you were younger. Oh, praise God. We need to come to church, people. Amen. We need right. to come to church. Verse 12, one man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good. He's asking a question here. David wants to know, you want a long life? You want a good life? You want to have many days? You want to have days that you, that you, that you love to be in? A good time while you're here passing through? Yeah, you want these things? Some of you people looking at me like it's a trick question. It's not a trick question. <laughs> do, do you want these things? Yes. Yes. Anybody here want a good yes. long life? Huh? Yes. As the Bible said, died a ripe old age, a good old ripe old age, huh? Yes. I, have, I have ran the race, I have fought the fight. Anybody want to have that in your life? Amen. Okay, well, let's go to the next verse and see what we need to be doing. Come on. Keep your tongue, keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips from speaking God. I'll keep going one more. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Oh boy. According to David, there's a couple things that we need to pay attention to. First and foremost, our tongue. Mm. Our tongue. Ooh, we ain't preached on the tongue in here in a long time. Our tongue Amen. will get us into trouble. Amen. Amen. Keep your tongue from evil. Wow. And wow. Wow. Yep. It's all in there. Keep your tongue from evil. Pastor, you just don't know how my boss is. And if I could get a chance to get them out behind the woodshed, Pastor, I... Pastor, you just don't know about my spouse. If I, could, if I just tell you what, if we just had one day, you remember that day, The Purge? You remember that movie? If we could just have that one, you know, there's some family members, Pastor, that I just, I take care of. You just don't understand. Keep your tongue from evil. Amen. Come on. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes. Yeah. Come on, speak life. That's right. Not death. Pastor, did you hear about such and such? No, and I don't want to. Amen. Stop spreading that mess. That's right. Stop it. 
keep your tongue from. It's amazing that his first thought, his first thought after this, do you want a ripe old age? Do you want to live through a good long life? Then keep your tongue from evil. Not, not keep your hands from something, not keep your eyes from something, not stop listening to something. No, it's your tongue. Your tongue is the problem. Amen. Wow. Ooh, some people are tuning out right here. It's okay. <laughs> keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Lies. Amen. That's it, right there, lies. Yeah. Depart from evil and do good. I, I, I love that. I love that he says depart from evil. Anybody here perfect? No. Anybody here ever lived a life where you've never done anything wrong? No. I, I'm going I'm to make it sound even worse. Anybody here ever lived a life where you've never done anything evil? No. no. That wrong was evil. Oh, come on. The wages of sin is death. Oh, come on. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. I'm going to scripture up here because you guys don't know. Come on. We, we've all done evil. The psalmist is very clear in this. Listen, you guys ain't going to make it out of this life being perfect. But what you need to do if you want to ripe old age is stop doing that evil right now. That's right. Depart from evil. Repent. That's it. Get it out of your life. Get your tongue under control. Get your lips under control. And then get the rest of that mess out of your life. That's right. Amen. And then here's what else you need to do. Start doing good. Don't just sit there like a normal law. Start doing good. Amen. Start doing good. Start seeking after peace and pursue it. Yes. Mm, come on. Peacemaker. This this peace, this peace is, is not only peace with man, but it's peace with God. Amen. Amen. You understand to have peace with God, you need to have the righteousness of God. Oh, come on. When I stand in front of God, I need to be wearing the righteousness of Christ, or else I'm bound straight for guilt and wrath. But if I have put on, if I'm clothed, in the righteousness of Christ, as the Bible tells me, then when God looks at me, he don't see me, he sees his son. Amen. He sees the price that was paid. He sees the blood that was shed on the cross. Amen. And I get to hear, well done, my good and faithful son. Amen. Enter into thy rest. Come on. Come on. You think I'm being silly? Go to the next verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Huh. There it is. There's that peace we're talking about. Seek after peace. Peace with man. Yes, of course, the Bible tells us very much so to do everything in our possibility, everything in our power to try to live in peace one with another. Romans tells us that very clearly. But you know, there's this God in heaven that you need to seek to make peace with. Some people don't do it until they're on their deathbed and then it's, have you made peace with your maker? Oh, oh that's what you're talking about. Huh. Wish somebody would have told me. I'm telling you today. There's this peace. It's called righteousness. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. Pastor, God ain't hearing my prayers. Repent. Yeah. Well, according to David, there's something going on in your life. You need to get right with the Lord. That's why it says ears will be open to you. You understand? Daniel started praying. And he didn't get the answer for several days. Weeks even. 21 days. Weeks even. And then when he finally got the answer, the answer came, I, I heard you the very first day, Daniel. Amen. Daniel, I heard you the very first day. Matter of fact, I sent you the answer the very first day. I was just held up in the spirit world. There was a fight going on in heaven and you don't know nothing about it. And if you could see it, you would flip out. There's a war going on in the, in the heavenly realm, in the places that are between you and me, and I had to get the answer down to you. But my ears is open to you, Daniel. Yeah. You pray three times a day, you open the window, you don't hear, listen to the king's decree that you can't pray to God. Oh, geez. I'm starting to sound like something we're going through. Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and the ears and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Amen. Wow. Come on. Wow. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Wow. wow. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Wow. Amen. Wow. You know, I, I, I'm a Scot. And of the lineage of my Scots, you know, there was brothers and Brothers have different family members and various different ones. But from my lineage, when I trace my lineage right on down through the history books, 
of all my uncles, of all my grandparents and whatnot until, you know, it splits off. There's other costs in the world, but talking about my bloodline, it ends right back there with that boy with the computer. You understand, my, my cousins don't, don't have any sons. My uncles had sons, but then their sons didn't have any. I'm the last one. And of, of me, there's one more right there. And if he doesn't have kids, my bloodline is cut off. You, you understand, the ones that are evil, that are setting up kingdoms in this world, that are setting up uh, organizations, that are setting up big, big uh, entities in their own name called this entity or that entity, God, God says, he, if they're evil, he's going to come off. Amen. And he won't even remember them no more. From the remembrance of the earth, not, not the remembrance of God, not the remembrance of hell, the remembrance of his earth. Wow. Wow. All of a sudden, they'll be gone. And you won't even remember no more. Well, nobody remembers no more. Wow. Don't, don't be one of those people. I want to live a long, good, healthy life. I want to leave a legacy. Amen. I want to leave something that people, hey, you remember there was that one time that old fat pastor used to preach? He was pretty decent. You know, all those miracles happened up there at that church. You know, he, they, was, they went through a pandemic back in the year 2020. <laughs> the Lord blessed them all the way through. Wow. I want to be known for what God's done in my life. I don't want to be known for, hey, you remember that guy? What's his name? I, I don't remember. All I know is he won a good dude. Yeah, all of a sudden something happened to him and he just he was just gone. What happened to him? I don't know. What was his name again? I, I can't remember. He's been cut off. Wow. Cut off. From the remembrance of the earth. Hmm. Praise God, I don't want to be like that. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Amen. We get back to the good folks. Those that are seeking after peace with God. Those that are putting on the righteousness of His Son, Jesus Christ. Now, come on. The righteous cry. Anybody here ever had such turmoil, such, such something go through in your life that it just caused you to cry? You just broke down and weep. Now, come on. There was something going on in your life when you, you hit your knees at the side of the bed or at the altar or wherever you was in your car. You just got away from everybody and you rolled the windows up. You put on a little music in the background so folks outside the car couldn't hear you. And you just began to weep. God, I don't know. I don't know how I'm getting through this, God. God, I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know how I can make it one more day. Amen. And then something happens. And you're here one more day. Yeah. Something happens and you make it. Something happens and a check comes through. Something happens, somebody gives you a little something. Something happens and it's not what you thought it was because there was an intervention somewhere. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. Oh, come on. Why? Because it says the righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all. There's that all again. All their troubles. Come on. There is nothing too big for God. There is no scary monster too scary that God can't handle it. There's nothing in the closet or under the bed or out there in the, the darkest of night that God's not bigger, stronger, faster, better than. Come on. Amen. And there's no worry in your mind. There's no fear in this earth. There's nothing that grips your heart at night when you're trying to sleep that is too big or too much of a problem that God cannot handle. Come on. He will deliver you out of all your troubles. The Lord is not in them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as are as a contrite as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. Amen. Listen, you have a broken heart. Anybody, anybody know the, the, the bees? The blessed is this one. For he shall inherit the earth. Blessed is this one, for he shall see God. Blessed is this one, yeah. Yeah, there's one in there that talks about the ones that mourn for they shall be comforted. Yeah. Huh, come on. You have a broken heart because you just know all the wrong you've done in this world. You just know all the sin that you, that you left in your, in your wake. You know the path that's behind you. If you could literally in this world turn around and look around, you, you would just it would just break you. 
And sometimes the devil just, he just gets in there and twists that memory in your head. You're reminded of all the wrong you've ever done. And it just breaks your heart. You say, God, please forgive me. God, please forgive me. And you begin to hurt and have pain. And God says, I already did that. Son, daughter, I've already forgiven you. Child, you've been forgiven by since the first day you asked. My son did that for you thousands of years on the cross. It's, it's yours. The price has been paid. And those that mourn are comforted. Those that have a broken heart and a contrite spirit are crushed. A contrite spirit is a crushed spirit. My spirit is crushed, God. I says, no, no, no. No, no, I got you. I got you. He draws an iron to you and he gives you comfort. He says, you're going to walk through some things in this life. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, you're going to walk through some things in this life. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Verse 20 says, he keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. You understand when you're walking through this world, God's got you. You may fall, but you ain't going to fall so hard you're going to break something. Come on. You ever heard that? A little kid climbing up a tree. Mommy yells up, you fall and break both your legs, don't you come running to me? <laughs> come on. <laughs> Took me a long time as a kid to get that joke. I didn't understand. I was like, why, why can't he run the mama? I didn't understand. <laughs> he broke both his legs. Okay, anyway. The guy said, you ain't gonna worry about it. You may fall, but not one broken bone. Well, not one broken bone. As a, as a football player, I was, I was many things as a football player. One of the positions I had to play was a, a punter. I was a punter back when I was a, early days of football. I could kick the ball pretty good. And uh, the guy, we were, we were, we were there. <clears throat> was in Wake Forest, though, I believe. He's playing. <clears throat> He's playing a lot of stuff. He's Wake Forest. <clears throat> and... Uh, we were back there, and our, our end zone was right behind us, and if we got backed up anymore, I mean, it was, they was going to score on us just because the ball would be in the end zone, and they would get a couple points for that. And so we was fourth down, and I had to get the ball out of here. And the guy snapped the ball to me, and it, it went over my head. He was nervous. I mean, everybody was nervous, you know. We hadn't lost a game all year, and it was, this, was, this was a tough one. This was a tough game. Snapped the ball over the top of my head, and <clears throat> I ran back to get it, and I picked the ball up, and I turned just to do all I could do to get it out of the... End zone, when I did, one of the enemy football players go and I kicked him right in the face mask. Oh, oh that hurts. <laughs> that hurt. And I tried to play a couple more downs and it just didn't work out. I, I couldn't do it. Here it was, I just cracked. I didn't break it, I just cracked, just fractured a piece of my bone on my foot. It just, it just splintered ever so, ever so much. That was painful. That was painful. It just, it didn't, it didn't snap. It just, it just splintered a little bit. It just fractured. A little hairline crack. I was, I was having to be carried off the field. <laughs> I was in work. Get me somewhere now. I'm hurting. I did. I had to go to the doctor. I didn't know I was, thumb was broken. I, I didn't even know. We had to kind of watch the replay and see what happened. Who did I kick? What happened? How did, how did this happen? Kick the dude right in the helmet. I mean, that, that's tough now. That's tough. I suggest nobody does that. But God said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The enemy's going to come against you. The devil is going to attack you. And every now and then, he's going to back you up. He's going to get you in a spot where you think you're surrounded and you can't, you can't get out. And you're going to do all you can do to just, just Lord, I'm just, I'm just lobbing a Hail Mary. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try to do, I'm going to bunt this thing over to my parents' house. Maybe they can help me out. I'm going to bunt this thing over to the pastor's house. Maybe he can help me out. I'm going to try and find somebody, Lord. I just got to get out of this situation. And God said, no matter how bad it looks, not even a bone is going to be broken. You understand? You understand who you are in Christ? You understand the might that you have because of what God has done for you. 
Don't be letting the devil back you up in no corner. Mm -hmm. Don't let him do that. Don't let him gain no ground. Huh, come on. The Bible says after you've done all you can to stand, then stand you therefore. Amen. Uh, don't, don't take no step back. Stand. Stand Amen. strong. Knowing that God's got this. Amen. Knowing that God ain't going to let the devil gain no more ground. Amen. Do all you can, and once you've done it all, stand you therefore. Don't, don't cower. Don't fall. Stand. Amen. Yeah. Hmm. I hate you, baby. I hate you. <laughs> Verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be destroyed. You know, evil eventually plays itself out. You can only destroy so much before there's nothing left to destroy, and then you're destroyed. Amen. Plain and simple. We're going to find that out in some cities around our great country. <laughs> These cities can only be destroyed so much before there's nothing left to destroy, and then the city itself is destroyed. Right, right. And then the evil can't really do much no more because there's no, there's nothing left. There's no, Amen. can't do anything with it. It's gone. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. There will be nothing left in these cities. They decapitated a, a, a statue of Jesus the other day. I mean, have you? No, wicked. It's bad enough when they were spray painting the statues. Not that there's any power or anything in the statues, but it's just, again, that reverence, that fear, that respect. I can just see me going to Grandma's house and even touching the picture of Jesus on the wall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he was crooked, Grandma! I'm sorry, Grandma! Let alone from coloring on it or spray painting it or cutting the picture in half. Oh, good grief. I might not be here today, so I'm going that. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants. Amen. I am redeemed, church. Amen. Are you redeemed this morning? Amen. 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 Oh, praise God. Christ. Oh, praise God, I'm redeemed this morning. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. <clears throat> that, that desolate, that destroyed, you won't, you won't be destroyed. Man, that's a beautiful thing. You understand that death has no victory over you? You have life and life eternal if you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You, you understand you have life and life eternal. Now, if you're not in Christ Jesus, then, oh, well, yeah, you're going to live for a long time as well. But then eventually, in that place, it's going to get wrapped up and thrown into a worse place. The Bible calls it the second death. Oh, watch out now. You're going to be destroyed. Destroyed. But if you're alive in Christ, de death has no victory over you. Sting, it has no sting. No. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Huh, come on. Amen. Wow. The Sunday school teacher asked this morning, he said, worst case scenario, what happens if we all get coronavirus and die? I said, praise God. <laughs> praise God. Amen. I thought that everybody else heard it was thought as quickly as I did. Praise God. <laughs> to see Jesus. Come on. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Know who you are, church. This, this chapter right here, Psalms 34, it has, it has just about everything in it. Salvation can be found in this chapter. Deliverance can be found in this chapter. If you're having problems with your relationship with anything and anybody, including the Lord, the fix is right there in that one chapter. Huh? If there's something going on in this world that you don't understand, right there it tells you what to do in this chapter. If there's things that are coming against you, right there it's in that chapter. If the enemy is coming against you, confidence and hope and encouragement can be found in this chapter. Everything it seems to be, can, it's right there in that chapter. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to end this service up just a touch different, not much. The altars are open for anything and everything that you may need. You understand, we've done heard the word of God and it says that all fears, all worries, all problems, God's mm -hmm. pain all. Trust in the Lord, fear the Lord, magnify the Lord. These are things that we're told to do. What we're going to do is we're going to put on the altar song. And if you need 
anything, the altars are open. If you want anything, the altars are open. And it's real simple because you've already been told what to do and how to do it. Amen. But if you need a bit of a reminder, I'm up here, I'll pray with you. My wife's up here, she'll pray with you. If you need anything in this world, the Lord is here. He wants to give it to you. He wants to fix it for you. He wants to turn your situation around. Now is the time. Now is the time. 